explain to a layperson what lightning does. Well, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it is a challenge when I talk to my family and they're like, <laughs> what exactly do you do? Uh, so lightning is a software layer that is on top of Bitcoin that enables people to send instant transactions. It enables more transactions per second. And my company, Lightning Labs, is developing LND. It's one of the multiple implementations of Lightning. There is no CEO of Lightning, the protocol, but we are a startup building tech for Lightning. But just real quick, so you said it sits on top of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. not blockchain. Well, the what? Bitcoin Wait. blockchain, right? Would that be fair to say? Yes, it uses the Bitcoin, because when people say blockchain, they say, well, what blockchain, right? Is mm -hmm. it the Bitcoin blockchain, right. the That's Ethereum a... blockchain, the Litecoin blockchain? So actually, in our initial release, we had support, support for both Bitcoin and Litecoin. Okay. So you can use Lightning on Bitcoin and Lightning on Litecoin. One really cool thing that we're working on is you can even do trades on Lightning instantly without an exchange between Bitcoin and Lightning, but that's still TBD in the works. Mm, okay. That's interesting. So you guys just launched your beta. Uh, you know, as we said, we want to have everything explained for a layperson. I'm always trying to keep in mind our reader who maybe they're one level deep at this point. They know about Bitcoin. Maybe they've dipped a toe into other cryptocurrencies, but they probably still don't fully understand this ecosystem. The news about your company is you've just launched beta. Now, what does that mean for, say, the average person, a non-developer. We can't go and send a payment yet using the Lightning Network, can we? Well, this is aimed at advanced users and developers. Uh, we have a community of a few thousand people that have actually been testing this for over a year before it was on test Bitcoin, and now people can do it with real Bitcoin. We didn't sleep a lot. <laughs> there were a lot of late nights. Uh, it was years in the making, but this is really the first step. It's for the advanced users. Like the early days of the internet, you, did, you had command lines, you didn't have the graphical web browser. We're in that day for Lightning right now, but we're working on a mobile app. We have a desktop app. There are all sorts of apps that developers have built. For example, you can pay one cent and buy an article, or you can you know, pay small amounts that have very high volume in games. You can even buy a fake uh, ice cream using lightning on the internet right now. <laughs> that's no crazier than Crypto Kitties. So. Seriously, yeah. Uh, that's what excites me, actually, is micropayments, especially maybe for online content. It might help the journalism what if you industry, could pay journalism? right? Which yeah. is us. We, we, we would like that, <laughs> selfishly. Uh, people still talk about the idea of a killer app. You know, they say, oh, Bitcoin needs a killer app. Of course, for a while it was like, well, what if sending Bitcoin itself is the killer app? Which, that might be the case. Maybe the phrase is already outdated anyway, but maybe the Lightning Network could be this killer application of, of Bitcoin technology? So, up to now, there's been the store of value use case for Bitcoin. You know, people say HODL in the community, and you hold on. By the way, it doesn't actually stand for anything. It's just a misspelling. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's a meme in the community. <laughs> uh, so, the goal with Lightning is to really bring this application layer. Uh, the People can integrate Bitcoin payments. They can do these cool swaps things. Uh, there's all sorts of things that can be done when you can have instant and high volume. We're talking many thousands of transactions per second, one day maybe even millions per second. Visa, for example, I believe can do about 40 to 60,000 transactions per second. So we want to go even beyond that. Bitcoin at its base layer can't do that, but mm. Lightning, because it's this layer on top of it, can. And then it uses the security of Bitcoin in order to transact. Yeah, it's interesting. The Bitcoin blockchain, which was so hyped as this big innovation, already we're at a point where a lot of people in this community say, OK, the Bitcoin blockchain isn't very good anymore. It's either moving too slow. I mean, maybe it's, it's all blockchain, though. So. I mean, yeah, the whole right, point of a blockchain is it's a public decentralized ledger. And you have thousands of computers on the, on the network that need to verify all transactions that anybody has ever sent, which is extremely inefficient. And that's why Lightning as a layer two can help with that. Well, so what's interesting in this space is you keep hearing people, people in our world, Wall Street types, they say, mm, Bitcoin, I don't like so much. Oh, Cryptocurrency, that's, that's, a, that's a dirty word. I don't want to touch that. But oh, blockchain, I'm Love really interested blockchain. in blockchain. Uh, can <laughs> so, you sort of give us your take on that narrative, which I would argue 2016 was maybe the year of blockchain cool, Bitcoin ugly. So, <laughs> I haven't said this in public before, but when we first uh, pitched my company, Lightning Labs, we actually took the word Bitcoin out of our uh, deck and our marketing material because it was so much about blockchain. Right. Now I feel like we've entered into a Bitcoin, not blockchain world where yes. people understood the value of cryptocurrency technology and what these can bring. I think blockchains are interesting in terms of technology, but you also have proof of work in Bitcoin. You have the public-private key cryptography. There are other things that make Bitcoin special. I think somehow the blockchain part got separated and became a thing, and there are so many other aspects that are important, too. Uh, I get to ask you this question. <laughs> Uh -oh. No, no, it's good. I mean, it's just kind of funny because I come in and I'm like, I want to ask you about being a woman in Bitcoin. Dan Roberts gets well, to Well, I'm interested here. in it too. But, it. you know, we talk to so many people in crypto and it's like 99% male. I'll refer more women to the show. Uh, actually, I'm, I know a lot of really great female leaders in our space. I 
collaborate with a lot of them. We kind of all, a lot of us talk to each other. I'm actually working on a conference uh, later this year that I think mm. will highlight the technical work of some and startups of some really amazing women. Um, not about being female, just about the great work that they're doing. But there are a lot of amazing women. Meltem Demiris, Neha Narula, Elizabeth Rossiello, Do you Catherine Nicholson, feel like so it's many. a hard space to operate in though, harder than being on Wall Street? Well, so I'm a tech person, right? Okay. So I come from the internet. I was teaching about internet issues prior to this, so I don't know Wall Street per se. But I think there's a huge opportunity right now for women. So I'm also involved in getting uh, scholarships for female developers to learn about Bitcoin, and that's something that's happening this month. I'm really excited about it. We have a bunch of female developers that are going to learn more about building Bitcoin. There was that viral tweet that said, you know, ladies, this is a space you should get into because otherwise, if you wait, it's going to happen again. The men are going to get all the money in this Bitcoin and blockchain and crypto There are space. a lot of amazing women. I think we're getting more and more, and we're doing more outreach to explain why this is so important and why building the next generation of financial infrastructure is going to have to be built by women as well. And brought up money again. I just, I just want to follow up. Do you care about the price of Bitcoin? Right now, I'm actually happy with how things are going because we had this massive price spike, right? But when you're building core technology and infrastructure like we are, I kind of want things to calm down a bit. Big price spikes aren't good for us technical folks that are developing. So I want things to be calm. We need, we're in the early days of Bitcoin. We are not in the you know, 2018 or even close. We're in the mid 90s. We need the time to build out Lightning and other elements of the infrastructure. And then we'll see what happens. I mean, I believe in this long term, but this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. I think people wanted it to be a sprint, but it's going to take time. And all these ICOs, just like a distraction? There is no lightning ICO. Yeah. All right. There is no lightning. <laughs> so people ask, what is the coin of lightning? And I joke and I say Satoshi's, because Satoshi is the lowest mm -hmm. denomination of Bitcoin. So if you want, if you're excited about lightning, you can buy some Bitcoin. Um, so you would not no do an coin. ICO? We are very public about, not, we have a joke one, but no, there's no real ICO. Uh, so we're public about that. I've been an ICO skeptic as well on Twitter. I have a lot of tweets around that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we're building for these core cryptocurrency protocols. And any Lightning transaction is going to be a Bitcoin transaction. If it's on Litecoin, it'll be a Litecoin transaction. Uh so great to have you here. I hope that we'll get more uh, when you have your own conference and we'll get to cover yes. that. And this is going to be something that uh, we watch evolve. With it's you. great to be here. Thanks so much for uh, having Elizabeth me. Elizabeth Stark, Lightning Labs. Thanks so much. Jan Roberts, great to have you in.